Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another tutorial video here for the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now I say the Phoenix A320 but what I'm going to show you today applies to all Airbus A320s when you have the option of using the secondary flight plan. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you use this to put in the engine out procedures for your departure. Now, an engine out procedure is exactly what it sounds like in the event of losing an engine when you're on the takeoff roll after V1, so you're committed to takeoff, then there are specific procedures that you need to follow to make sure that you're safe. And all airlines basically stipulate and have their own engine out procedures for where they would like the pilots to take their aircraft because they know it's a safe place to go, enter the hold, troubleshoot, and then decide what they're going to do. The use of the secondary flight plan means this can then be activated and then the aircraft can fly this with the autopilot on in nav mode. So here we are on the ground at Montpellier and I've just created a very, very rough flight plan here between uh, Montpellier and uh, London's Gatwick. Now, obviously, that's not the important thing. The important thing we're going to do is looking at using our secondary flight plan to program the engine out procedure. So the first thing you want to do once you've actually got your main flight plan up is go over to the secondary flight plan and copy it. So this is now placed into the secondary flight plan and you can confirm this by the fact that it's all shown in white normally the main flight plan of course in uh, in green but secondary flight plan is here in uh, in white so this is what we're going to edit and we're going to pop in the engine out procedure so first of all we need to know what that is we're going to be departing from runway one to left here in Montpellier uh, so in order to get that I use SimSmart now of course SimSmart is a A320 Neo performance calculator so we're not actually uh, interested in using this program to get our uh, V speeds and flex temp and things like that but it will give us our engine out procedure so Lima for mic tango or we'll just pop that in there and I want runway 12 and it's 12 left there is a 12 right but it's much too short for uh, for the a320 so that's why it's not uh, not included here um, we just need to fill out everything here just so we can access the uh, engine out procedure so you can pop anything you wanted here it doesn't really matter all we're after is being able to hit the calculate button here because once we've done that this is the important bit down at the bottom so here is the engine out procedure for runway one to left at Montpellier so at 1600 feet we're going to proceed direct to SPIG holding point and then once we get to SPIG we're going to enter the hold the inbound course is 304 and that consists of left turns so how do we go ahead then and enter this into our secondary flight plan now, if you are unfamiliar with the airport, it's always a good idea to work out where that holding point actually is, so you have some good situational awareness. So if we bring my Navigraph charts in here, you'll see that I've already just uh, done a quick search for that. We can see that SPIG uh, holding point is shown just here, pretty much straight out on uh, a departure out of what would be runway 12. So it's just basically out over the Mediterranean, not that far away at all all. If we have a look at the actual departure, you'll see that SPIC isn't here, but we're going to add it in in a moment. So let's have a look and see what that engine out procedure actually was. It was a standard one, which means that we would be safe to continue out on a runway heading without having to make any turns left or right to avoid any terrain. So that makes sense considering that uh, departing from runway 12 takes us straight out over the sea. So no terrain to worry about. We can just fly straight out on a runway heading until we're happy to get to our holding point. If we have a look at the standard instrument departure that we're already using, we'll see that we come out and we fly pretty much the run we're heading anyway to the waypoint Mike Tango 130. If we just have a quick look down here, there it is. So basically, instead then of making the turn after Mike Tango 130, the right hand turn here to 132, we just want to continue to fly straight ahead to that waypoint. So all we're going to do then is we could say, well, actually, we are just going to go direct to SPIG straight after 
130 because we know from looking at the uh, the chart that it is pretty much just straight out so all we have to do then for this quite simple engine out procedure is just uh, pop in here SPIG after the 130 waypoint let's go ahead and do that and we're going to pop that in after 130 so we want it to appear just here there we go so SPIG is now in and if we come back and have a look there you can see in white straight out to SPIG on a runway heading what we need to do then is tell well we want to then enter the hold at SPIG so back to our secondary flight plan let's select it and select hold from there I'm going to put in the inbound course which was 304 and it's left turn so let's go ahead 304 and left turns if we have a look now there it is and the aircraft will then just sit in that hold all day until we've decided what we're going to do and uh, we're nice and happy so what we can do now then is say well do you know what if we have had an engine failure chances are we're not going to continue all of the way up to um, we're not going to continue all the way up to Gatwick so we would probably return back to our airfield now of course there are a whole host of different things and reasonings you need to take into account with this we may be far too heavy uh, the weather in Montpellier might not be great etc so you may not want to return here but if you've got something really serious then you will want to obviously return here now what we can do is change our destination so if we go to SPIG again and we'll just pop in Lima Fox Mike Tango and basically tell the aircraft you know what we are going to return back here oops just Lima Fox Mike Tango uh, we set that then as our new destination basically back returning to where we've just departed from so that's now been done and we can also tell it let's put the arrival in as well uh, so runway one two left and it's now an approach no start and we don't need to for this need to put any vias in of course you can go through you can find the, the uh, the waypoints etc but in the real world if things were that serious you could just get some ATC and they will give you vectors back to it all we need to do now is have a quick look and then if we clear the discontinuity it would join up the dots so there we go that's now done so essentially if the worst came to the worst we'd take off we'd enter the hold we'd decide what we're doing and then we have got the approach or the final part of the approach at least already keyed in so we would just be able to activate our secondary flight plan in the event of uh, an engine out or a major failure and then we will uh, the aircraft will happily fly in managed mode autopilot on enter that hold so our workload management is reduced as pilots and we can focus we know the aircraft is being flown we can focus on uh, on the ecam uh, systems and things like that working through various checklists Okay, so that was a quite easy example of the engine out procedure, but what if we were flying not so simple engine out procedures? How do we go about putting those in? Well, let's have a look. So instead this time, let's say we're departing same airport, but we're departing from runway 30, right? And again, what we would need to do is we need to uh, go to our secondary flight plan copy the active and there we go the secondary flight plane is now exactly the same as the primary and we're gonna have a look at the engine out procedure for 30 right again I will just come to sim smart for this 30 right uh, we can leave all the calculations in just hit calculate and then we get the new engine out procedure now you'll see this says that it is a non-standard engine out procedure what that means if it's non-standard it means basically we can't just fly straight out on a runway heading and know we're going to be safe because there is terrain in the way and we need to make a turn left or right to avoid that you can see it says that at the Fox Julia Romeo waypoint or so 7.2 miles from there we need to make a right turn back to SPIG which was the uh, holding fix for the other runway 
but it's going to take us here obviously via this little procedure so we need to go and pop this in so 7.2 miles from the Fox Juliet Romeo again if you're unfamiliar uh, with your surroundings make sure we know where those waypoints are so Fox Juliet Romeo is the VOR here on the uh, on the airfield at Montpellier so we're then going to go and have a look and see what our standard instrument departure looks like to begin with so we can have a look uh, just here so that looks pretty much like a nice straight out departure but then we're going to continue to fly on a runway heading until we get to 7.2 miles from the Fox Juliet Romeo. To do that, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can create a waypoint called anything you want. E fail for engine failure or E out SID for engine out SID. Let's go ahead and create it and we are going to pop it after Mike Tango 134. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. So if I create one called engine out SID. Now, of course, this isn't a waypoint in the real world. So the moment that I enter that in, it'll bring us to the new waypoint page because it doesn't know where engine out SID is. It needs to be told. So we're now going to tell it where we want that to be. So the place is going to be based off of Fox Juliet Romeo. And the bearing can be a runway track. And if you're unsure of what your runway track is, this is where the charts can really help. So the runway track for the departure here is going to be 303. So 303 on a bearing, pop that in. And that distance again is 7.2 miles. Okay, so our new waypoint here is SID. We can define it just there and then we're going to store that so let's go back to our secondary flight plan and then we could actually pop this uh, flight plan in and we could put that waypoint uh, either here or here to be fair let me uh, put it a little bit closer uh, so it doesn't matter whereabouts it goes the main thing is that after departure we're now going to fly to EOC and we can check what that looks like uh, there we go actually because if we'd have seen from the charts had I been bothered to look the uh, initial departure takes us on a right turn pretty much straight uh, straight away but if we continue to fly the runway track which we're allowed to do on an engine out sit we continue straight out this will be 7.2 miles away and then we're going to tell it it needs to make a right hand turn back to SPIG. Now it's very important that we make a right hand turn not a left hand turn obviously this is there for a reason probably due to some terrain. If we just went and popped in SPIG just here well there is a chance it may program a left hand turn. Let's try it and uh, and see what happens. So let's just pop that in. I'm going to double check the spelling of that. E-S-B-I-G. So we've popped that in there. Right, as we can see it's actually almost exactly 108 degrees, sorry 180 degrees behind us. Well that means that when we get to the e outside, which way is the aircraft going to turn? It could turn left or it could turn right. So we want to define for the aircraft exactly which way we want the aircraft to go. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create another little waypoint uh, just to the east over here to make sure we turn right and it doesn't need to be a massive uh, distance away. In fact we don't want it to be too far away because we know we've got terrain around us. So we just want to go and pop in another waypoint over here just to ensure that the aircraft makes a right hand turn and not a left hand turn. So in order to do that all we'd need to go ahead and, uh, and do is after EO SID we can create another waypoint so place bearing distance waypoint so from EO SID let's fly a track which is going to turn us to the right so 090 would do east and if we just set that at three miles away and then clear out the discontinuity there we go that is now 
going to make a right hand turn and then once we'd made that right hand turn we could go direct to SB we wouldn't have to fly all the way but it's just to make sure that we do make a right hand turn and the aircraft doesn't decide do you know what let's uh, let's fly left so a little bit more complicated that one and of course you'd then go through and do the exact same thing as before you go to SB pop in the whole details and uh, pop in the uh, the new destination so again, those were pretty straightforward, but some engine out procedures can be even more complicated. Let's take a look at a, uh, another one. So this is a route now departing from Milan Malpensa's 35 right, and we're going to have a look at the engine out procedure for this one. Again, I'll just bring up SimSmart. So it's a non-standard engine out procedure, meaning we can't just continue to fly straight out for as long as we like, because there's terrain in the way. We need to make a turn pretty sharpish. And you'll see that this is actually much more detailed. So at uh, eight miles from the Mike Mike Popper, we need to turn right to heading 120, intercept and follow the Sierra November Romeo Radial 330 to the Sierra Romeo November VOR holding point, and then we can enter the hold. So how do we go ahead popping something like this in where we have to intercept radials? So I've gone ahead and already copied our primary flight plan. If we have a quick look on here, we can see uh, how that departure looks. Let's go ahead then and check out the engine out procedure and pop this in. So non-standard, it means that at eight miles from Mike Mike Papa, we're going to have to make a right hand turn to a heading of one, two, zero. So the first thing we need to do is pop in a waypoint, which is eight miles from Mike Mike Papa. Let's go ahead and do that first. So the place Mike Mike Papa and we can put a bearing of three, four, six, as that's the track that we will be flying and eight miles pop that in just there that's become place bearing distance zero four and if i just zoom out there we can see it so place bearing distance zero four after that then the next difficult bit is we need to fly to a heading of 120 to intercept and then follow the Sierra November Romeo Radial 330 to Sierra Romeo November and that's where we will enter the hold. So how do we go and do this one? Well we need to create a waypoint that intersects that radial from a heading of 120. So let me show you what I mean. Here's Malpensa. Here is the Sierra Romeo November VOR where we're going to enter the hold. And all we've done so far is told the aircraft that we would fly straight out to eight miles from the Mike Mike Popper, which is Malpensa's VOR. So eight miles, we're then going to fly to a heading of one, two, zero, come around and then intercept the radial of 330 to come and enter this hold. So we need to create a waypoint which would be somewhere in space, uh, somewhere around here on the heading of 120 from our eight mile waypoint out, the place bearing distance 04 waypoint. And then we're going to intersect it and fly the 330 radial in to Sierra Romeo November. So in order to do that, we need to create that waypoint and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that now. So let's just call this waypoint E fail. So we'll pop that in just here. Now, of course, that waypoint doesn't exist. We're going to have to create it. So the place then is going to be based on the place bearing distance 04 waypoint that we've already got in. On a heading of 120, because that's the heading that we need to fly after passing this waypoint. And then, sorry, let me just go back. We need to use this key, just a little dash sign. So place bearing distance, we're then gonna fly a heading of 120 and then we want to fly f the 330 radial Sierra Romeo November. 
so I'll pop that next bit in, Sierra Romeo November three oops three three zero so this is going to uh, pop in this waypoint called e-fail there we go and just check that we use the correct VOR there's obviously a few VORs with Sierra Romeo November as that identifier one one three decimal seven one one three decimal seven that's the one and store that waypoint now if we go back to our secondary flight plan we can now put in E fail just there and there it is and we should then see there we go so our aircraft will fly out to uh, PBD 004 we could make that an overfly point if we wish so instead of turning early it um, it would fly over it and then make the turn to be fair to Neil is probably not a bad idea as we know we've got terrain to the north we've got the Alps so that's not a uh, not a huge issue but if I just zoom out a tad more we'll see then it flies to e fail and then from e fail we're going to pop in that Sierra Romeo November VOR make sure again we use the correct one and there we just go and do as we did before we enter the hold instructions which was the inbound course one two five and right turns there we go we'll check that out and there it is the holds all done all you have to do again same as we did previously is from the hold just tell it you know what we're going to come back into uh, Milan and set the new destination set a runway if you know which runway they're going to be using and which approach that's fine but to be honest in the uh, case of an emergency it doesn't matter too much most likely we'll be looking at landing at 35 left so if I can find the Zulu for 35 left that's always a good safe bet no start we can have a look at the veers uh, there's uh, we can pop no veer in there occasionally what you will find is that the holding point is actually a veer for the approach and if that is the case then do select that because then that will actually tie up quite nicely and uh, give you a full procedure back in uh, which is even neater so let's go ahead return that and we'll see there we go everything uh, nice and safe gets us in the hold sit there as long as we wish till we've sorted things out and then we can uh, just uh, either vector ourselves back in and uh, back around to uh, egg pop for starting the approach back into milan so hopefully that has given you some insight onto how we use the secondary flight plan to go ahead and program in the engine out procedures i understand it can perhaps seem a little bit complicated at first uh, but the more you do it the more practice you have of it the easier and quicker you will become if you do have any questions regarding this however then please do leave a comment down below and i will get back to you and uh, answer as best i can thank you so much for watching i hope you have found this video useful if you have please do leave a like and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and live streams thanks so much i'll see you all again very soon bye bye for now